Hello everyone, Dr. Bentham here down in Summerland, BC. I've got uh, a question that came in from Alyssa. Hi Alyssa, long time no see, hope you're well. Um, but she had a really great question that I, has come up before and I thought um, I'd, I'd share my answer with you guys. So her question was, do you have any insight or thoughts regarding brands for supplements? Are brands really better or worse than each other? So the answer, in my opinion, is that for some things it doesn't matter, uh, but for some things it does. So vitamin C would be in the category of you can't really screw that one up. So there are some expensive versions of uh, liposomal vitamin C and some other delivery systems, but um, at the end of the day, vitamin C is vitamin C, and it's pretty ex the same across the board. Now, <clears throat> there's also... On the other hand, which is things like omega-3 fatty acids, for example, there are a lot of ways that, that can get screwed up. So I'm going to teach you an easy way to read labels for supplements that don't require really any formal training or any in-depth knowledge about dosing or ingredients. Um, and these are the ways that I will pick up something and have a look at it and very quickly to ascertain whether or not this is a company that I would want to work with or not. So first, I just want to say a little note on my general framework for how I'm going to suggest we do this. So the idea is that how someone does anything is how they do everything. So it would be um, like if you went to a restaurant and you went in to the bathroom and it was a disaster and you were the first person in there that day. So in the back of your mind, you're thinking if this is how they're cleaning the things that the public is going to see, it makes you wonder how are they cleaning the kitchen, which nobody sees. Because how you do anything is how you do everything. So with that said, if a company is using a cheap version of a vitamin or a mineral that is maybe less absorbed, then it, it tells you something about the company's values and what their priorities are. So uh, it may be that they're looking for the low, low cost sort of end of the market, and there's nothing wrong with that. But if you're wanting to tell who's putting in more effort on the quality side, here's how I will evaluate it very quickly. Um, so I should mention before we begin that um, there's no conflict of interest. I don't. I'm not on payroll from any supplement company, um, though I do. I do have some supplements for sale in my clinic. Um, I also uh, should mention too that just because something is a cheaper version, it doesn't mean that it's completely useless. It's just it may not be the best option for some people or for most people. So the first, I'm going to show you five or tell you five ways, and then we're going to go through a couple of examples. So first, I want to know what forms of the vitamins are they using. So I'm only going to tell you about three or four here because you don't need to know many of them. So uh, because Alyssa asked specifically about vitamin A, that's one example where there's different versions of that vitamin. So there's beta carotene, which is the orange pigment in carrots and sweet potatoes and stuff like that that help you see in the dark, or at least that's what my, my parents told me when I was a kid. Um, and, and now beta carotene is something that your body can take and cut in half and then give you two vitamin A molecules. So... Um, it provides the body with substance to make vitamin A, but it doesn't give you vitamin A directly. So you can take, you can eat carrots until you literally turn orange, and I've known people who've done that. Um, but you're not going to get any sort of vitamin A toxicity from it because beta carotene just gets stored that way. Versus retinoic acid, which is the active version. Now, if this pandemic gets wild and it turns to eating polar bear livers or something, which are extremely high in vitamin A you can get vitamin A toxic um, because vitamin A and beta carotene are different. Now, vitamin A does have more direct effects and there's reasons I would use it therapeutically, but um, it just highlights the idea that there's a beta carotene version and a retinoic acid or retinoyl palmitate is what you'll see sometimes. But the two that I look at the most or the, the first two I'll look at, one is magnesium. So what form of magnesium are they using? Are they using magnesium oxide because it's sort of a it's the cheaper, not very well absorbed, and not very well assim assimilated into the body version of it. So if they're using um, magnesium oxide, I'll, that's sort of one strike. And then the other one I look at uh, versus, let's say it's magnesium citrate or anything magnesium that ends in an eight. Now calcium carbonate's another one. So calcium carbonate is not a very well digested version of calcium. So if I see calcium carbonate, that's another red flag. Uh, and then another one that I'll jump to would be vitamin B12. So if it says cyanocobalamin, that's the cheaper, less active version. Again, it's not wrong, but it's just not the best option out there. If it says methylcobalamin, then I would be, that's another one of the sort of check marks that I would say, okay, they're, they've, they're making an effort.
Um, folic acid is similar. There's folic acid, which again is, is fine for many things, but for some people it's not. And a, full, uh, a methyl folate might be a better option for some. So that's step one. What forms of the vitamins are they using? And you really only need to know about three of these to be able to get a sense of it. Two, are they, uh, one thing that irritates me is when companies will just make a list of every superfood they've ever heard of, and then they'll call it like a proprietary blend, and they won't tell you how much of any of them there are. So the issue with that is if you have a capsule um, and there's limited amount of space, the more ingredients you put in, the less of any of them you'll have room for. So if you have 50 ingredients in a limited space, you're, it, it may be that you don't get a, a therapeutically beneficial amount of any one of them. But it's sexy to put it on the label because maybe people have um, you know, seen something on TV or something and they hear, oh, that must be a good thing. Oh, and it has this one too. And then um, it, it can be, I, I think that's why companies will do that is because they want to just capture as many people as they can, uh, just in terms of um, things that people have heard of. So um, I can, I'm going to go through an example of that too in a minute. But So that's the second one. Is there just a big list of a proprietary blend where they don't tell you how much is in there? That's another little strike. A third one is dosage. Now, um, this one takes a little bit of knowledge, but I'm only going to focus on one thing that's super common, and that's for the omega-3s. So for example, um, fish oil, is it, it, the active ingredients are something called EPA and DHA. So if you look at the fish oil breakdown on the back, let's say there's a thousand milligram capsule uh, or gel cap, which I printed one off here. Let's see if I can get this in the camera here. So if you look at the orange highlighted uh, uh, ingredients there, it says EPA or eicosapentaenoic acid and then the DHA. That's 180 and 120 milligrams of that 1000 milligram uh, gel cap. So that's about 30% of the fish oil that you're getting in that one is therapeutically beneficial or active. Uh, versus, let's say, here's one here that I like to use, where if you look at the EPA and DHA content uh, in one gel cap, well, the capsule is a little bit bigger, but one gel cap will have about a thousand milligrams of the two of them. So if you're targeting, like, let's say, a th like three grams of these omega 3s. On the one hand, you're going to need 10 of those gel caps. On, on this hand, you might need two, or three, sorry. So, um, so that's one that I think can be sometimes important. To, to, instead of just looking at fish oil, you want to see, okay, are, what are the important things here, and do they actually have enough of those ones? So the fourth thing <clears throat> is I, it, it, there, no, no third-party lab testing to verify potency and contamination is required at this point, but if a company is actively doing that, again, it's a bit of an integrity move and it just it, it tells you that they're, they care and they, they're putting in extra effort to try to um, deliver a quality product. Um, and again, I'm just going to use that same omega-3 one. Um, and so you'll, where they'll even say on the label that they are doing third-party testing to ensure uh, <clears throat> potency and uh, freedom from contamination, which for things like omega-3s, Unfortunately, our oceans are quite polluted, and so um, fish can accumulate things like mercury and uh, PCBs and different things that you don't want to ingest into your body. So if a company is actively pursuing third-party testing, that's, to me, a, a really big one. Um, and then the fifth one would be uh, I tend to, where possible, use local uh, uh, companies or Canadian companies in this situation um, just for... Uh, uh, partly just delivery cost um, for with for currency fluctuations ordering from the U.S. that it sometimes can get expensive, but also just to support um, the local companies as well. So that's the five things I like to look for. I thought I'd go through a couple examples. So we looked at the fish oil one, um, and here is a, a multivitamin I just pulled offline. Um, and so we're going to look at if you're going to look at a label for a multi, we're going to just jump to a couple things. So first, we're going to look at, okay, what about the vitamin B12? So this one uses the cyanocobalamin. So, and also, I think their dose is like 21 micrograms, which is, which is pretty low um, for that particular vitamin. And, um, and then another one I jumped to is the magnesium, which is just over here. So magnesium oxide. So there, like after I look at those two, I'm kind of like, okay, um, we did talk about vitamin A. So this one has vitamin A, but it also has beta carotene. Not that that's good or bad, but 
Um, so this one, even just on the B12 and the magnesium, I'm like, eh, don't know if I'd go with that one. Here's another one. I just pulled this. This is more of like a powdered product that you can scoop into drinks and whatnot. Uh, and again, so let's just go with our metric here. Um, let's jump right down to vitamin B12. It looks like it's the cyanocobalamin, the magnesium. It's the magnesium oxide. Um, they're folic acid. It's as opposed to the methyl folate. Um, so, uh, and then this is what I was talking about earlier, proprietary superfoods. And then they list, I counted 44 uh, different things. That, and, and this is a huge range. This is, includes whey protein, pea protein, um, chia, flax. And then it just goes on to everything that I've pretty much ever heard of. Uh, and it, it, it just doesn't tell you how much of any of those things are. To, and so to me, that's a bit of a red flag. Um, as an example on the other side, so I'm going to, again, just show a multivitamin. That's an example of one that I think um, is like a, just a, a counter example of that. So if we have the uh, list of ingredients here, I'm trying to sneak in here and so let's just jump to magnesium. So they're using magnesium cit citrate. So I'm like, okay, they've, they've considered that. Um, I will look at their B12. They're using the methylcobalamin. So right away I'm thinking, okay, these people have done their homework and they're um, trying to use the, some of the better, more active versions. Um, I'll, we didn't talk about vitamin E, but they use mixed tocopherols because vitamin E is really a group of about eight different versions of it, um, whereas most, most other ones will use something like just called a D alpha tocopherol, which is one of the eight. Again, from both of these other ones, did that. So, uh, and then again, I'll look. Maybe this one I'm not expecting you to know, but some of the doses I'll look at. Okay, so what about their B12? And then it says, okay, a thousand micrograms in a dose. That's pretty good. That's like even for people with difficulties with absorption, that's pretty good. So, <clears throat> those are a few examples of things. Um, that you can do really quickly to evaluate a supplement company and sort of determine if that company is the one you want to use or maybe choose else, uh, elsewhere. So if you have any more questions or things that you think would be interesting for me to talk about, by all means, now's a good time because we do have some uh, downtime these days. So hope you're well and we'll talk to you soon.